to another Tech Minds video. So Jan over at SDR Kit sent me this outdoors L-band active antenna to try out receiving Inmarsat. Now, if you don't know what Inmarsat is, well, in brief, there are a few geostationary satellites up in the skies and they pretty much provide a full coverage of the globe. Now, there's lots of different services using them, but in this video, we'll take a look at decoding the maritime safety messages and aircraft aero ACARS messages, which are messages sent from ground stations to aircraft around the world via the Inmarsat network. So this L-band antenna from SDR kits will come very well wrapped as shown here. The supported frequency range is between 1535 MHz and 1550 MHz, which is pretty much in the middle of the Inmarsat L-band downlink. This version also has a 1.542 GHz bandpass filter to help reject any unwanted signals. Its right hand circular polarized, has an inbuilt metal ground plane which helps towards a gain of around 28 to 30 dB and this antenna is active so you will need to provide it power via a bias T. However, most SDR receivers will have this built in and you'll just need to activate this in software. Now I'll be using the AirSpy Mini in this example and that has a bias T inbuilt, I just activate it in SDR Sharp. The antenna also comes with 10 meters of good quality RG58 coax which is terminated with an SMA connector. Now for me, I actually shortened this cable to around two meters and then re-terminated it, only because I didn't need that much cable to be able to mount the antenna outside and still have enough cable coming into my shack where my SDR is located. Now at 1.5 gigahertz, the loss with RG58 is quite a bit, but as mentioned before, you can shorten the cable if required, plus this antenna is active with an inbuilt LNA. The antenna is waterproof and designed to be mounted permanently outside. Now the threaded base actually fits a marine antenna mount. So I ordered one from Amazon and then attached it to the side of my house. Now this mount is quite good because it allows me to angle the antenna towards the Inmarsat satellite, which in turn provides a stronger signal. So here we can see SDR Sharp running in the background tuned to the NCS channel of Inmarsat. I'm also running the SkyTel C plugin on SDR Sharp, which is decoding the signal and then sending those decoded packets to the SkyTel C GUI application that you can see on the bottom right. Now the information in these decoded packets are LES and EGC messages. These types of messages contain maritime safety information, which is usually received by vessels out at sea. The application that we have running on the bottom left is the latest version of the Technomoid EGC and LES decoder. This is a very good application and to use, you simply need to pipe the audio output from your SDR software to a virtual audio cable so that the Technomoid application can decode it. Now, if you leave this running for a few hours, you'll surely come back to some received and decoded messages. Now, some of these can be quite boring, but some of them can also be quite interesting. And for those messages which include coordinates, a map will also be shown highlighting the area of the messages referring to. The Technomoid application will also show you the available channels. So if you wanted to retune to something specific, this is the channel list for that particular satellite. The SkyTel C GUI application pretty much shows the same information. But I've noticed in the past that the Technomoid application will decode some messages and SkyTel C doesn't even show them. So having both running or just the Technomoid application is advised. Another service which we can receive and decode from Inmarsat is ACARS. Now these messages, mainly ADSC messages, are information sent from ground stations directly to a specific aircraft or vice versa. Now messages can contain information about flight plan, the aircraft's toilets, or private messages for the pilots. The application we use to decode these messages is called Jero. With each packet, an aircraft identifier should be available. Jero keeps a record of these identifiers in a database, which lets you then look them up online. You can see flight plans and even photos of the actual aircraft if available. Tracking information such as height, latitude, longitude information is not broadcast on the L band of Inmarsat, but it is available on the C band. Unfortunately though, we would need a rather large dish and LMB to receive those messages, but Jero is still the application to go for for decoding those signals. 
Maybe in the future, I'll set a satellite dish up and try decoding them from the C-band. Now, while scanning in Mossat, you will find a few different aero transmissions. The easiest to decode are the 600 BPS, as they're quite narrow and usually quite strong. Now, there are also 1200 BPS and 10500 BPS transmissions available, but you will need a very good signal strength to decode those 10500 BPS signals. They are a lot wider than the 600 BPS. In fact, if you do go ahead and decode the 10500 BPS signals, you'll probably get a lot more information. So it's worth playing with the antenna to get that strong signal. Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of the new outdoor L-band antenna available from SDR kits here in the UK. They do ship worldwide. So go and check out their website. I'll leave a link down below. Massive thank you to all the patrons and members and subscribers of the channel. And until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.